I want to say firstly uh, welcome to you all. This is my chair coming in now. Because, uh, excuse me. He's, he's always late for everything. Uh, I would say welcome, but also I want to say welcome to friends at a similar launch which is taking place in Jamaica uh, on Monday, hosted by Anna Perkins, and that's why we're recording this today. Uh, I'm sure, uh, Anna, it's better weather in Jamaica than it is here in London, <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, a warm welcome from, from us all here. And indeed, there are uh, similar book launches over the next, the following weeks in the USA, in Kenya, in Nigeria, Ukraine, Chile, and the Philippines. So this is truly a global launch uh, of a global issue. And I'm wearing three hats today, uh, and they all intersect a, a, a little bit with, with this with this book. Firstly, I'm the group CEO of Decorum International. Um, we work with about 20,000 uh, plus homeless people in seven countries around the world uh, and expanding all the time, sadly. Uh, I'm one of the founders of the Institute of Global Homelessness based at DePaul University in Chicago, uh, which is a place of leadership training and research, global advocacy in the area of street homelessness. And thirdly, I'm the coordinator of something called the Fanvin Homeless Alliance, which is an initiative to celebrate 400 years of the birth of the Vincentian Council, <coughs> and it's bringing together all two million members of that Vincentian family uh, into one collaborative effort to do something practical and something related to systemic change for homeless people. So Vincent, uh, 400 years ago, was left a million dollars by King Louis XIII, and Using this money, he bought something called 13 houses to house uh, the foundlings on the streets of Paris. So one of the things we're doing today is we're building, metaphorically, 13 houses in 151 countries around the world where the Vincentians were. So a practical display of, uh, of bringing people to, together to, to do something and hope to house 10,000 people in, in the process of it. So before I begin, uh, do we have any bird watchers in the audience? Yes. We do have a bird watcher. There's more than you. It's only you that admit to it. <laughs> any bird watchers? Any others? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we are. Good, good to know. It's two, two, three. Uh, you, so you probably know that the Royal Society for the Protection of Birds in February every, every year has something called the Great Backyard Bird Cat. Big Garden Bird Watch. Thank you, yes, indeed. Is this, this weekend? Is this weekend? This weekend. This weekend. This weekend. This weekend. I, bet it's this we I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what you might not know is that there are a uh, hundred countries that take part in a similar uh, backyard bird watch around the world. And all of that information is collated into one database and it gives us a count of birds around the world. But also, in the case of migrating birds, it tells us whether numbers have risen or fallen, and whether that's the result of that is a, a, a natural disaster, whether it's a man-made problem that's caused it, but we, we, can, we can work back and do something to, to get those figures up. The reason I mentioned that right at the beginning is we know much more about the numbers of birds in the world than we know about the numbers of homeless people in the world. Very few countries count homelessness, especially to the same methodology. I'll come back to that point a little bit later. Let me tell you about how this book uh, came about first. So in 2016, I was in uh, my office in Chicago. Uh, I'd gone over there to set up the, uh, the Institute of Global Homelessness. And uh, uh, an email came through my Dropbox from Pat Jones. Some of you might know Pat Jones. You see it tonight. Uh, and he said, you know, Mark, I've been doing a little work, uh, doing some research. Uh, and pretty broad base, but I'm dropping into some Catholic social teaching uh, and looked at homelessness, and there's not really been anything written in this area around homelessness Catholic social teaching since, since the mid-1980s. And this kind of like really struck with me. Uh, it really resonated, and it confirmed a few things that I'd, I'd been thinking anyway, which was very little attention is paid to street homelessness as a global issue, and yet it affects every country, every city, every town, everywhere we go. We can see it visibly. So, so why, why isn't give, this is given the prominence that, that it should be given? And the church does a lot 
I can tell you the church did a lot because even within the Vincentian family, uh, within this piece of work I'm doing at the moment, on the back of an envelope, I calculate the Vincentian family is spending $1 billion a year on homeless services around the world. And if you add what the church is putting together on that, we're probably the biggest provider of homeless services uh, in the world. That said, do we reflect on it as a church? Do we encourage other global institutions to think more deeply about street homelessness, the UN, the EU, the World Bank? The current SDGs, Sustainable Development Goals, talk about eradicating poverty, improving health for all, embracing the challenge of urbanisation, eradicating inequalities. And yet, if you look at all 70 of the Sustainable Development Goals, all 160 plus indicators, you'll find nothing about street homelessness as a measure. And yet, here's something that's on all of our doorsteps. So I'm, I'm not a theologian, as every one of my undergraduate tutors at Durham would absolutely confirm, <laughs> uh, for sure. But I do sense an opportunity uh, when it comes along. So with that in mind, I managed to get some sponsors uh, on board. Uh, the Institute of Global Homelessness itself, the three Vincentian universities in the United States, uh, which is DePaul, St. John's and Niagara, and Porticus uh, as a funder. And they decided to give me a little bit of money to explore this issue further. So we brought together a steering group uh, to help us think this through, and that was Pat Jones and myself, Anna Rowland, who's going to speak a bit later. We had Megan Clark, who some of you might know from Niagara, Bill Kavanagh from DePaul University, and Ethna Reagan, who is where, Pat, can you tell me right? In Dublin. In Dublin, yeah, so Ethna Reagan became a board. And this was a great little creative bunch who got together. And what we did is we planned a symposium uh, in, for November 2017, and we decided to mix it up a bit. We put theologians, alongside practitioners, alongside policy makers, alongside advocates, and we'd see what would come out of that kind of uh, mix of, of mix of people. And there's been lots of fruits from, from this gathering, but I'm going to focus on two today, and they're the two publications. The first is an online collection of papers from the symposium itself, and it can be find, found online at Niagara University in an edition of the Journal of Vincentian Social Action. And that's been edited by Anna and by Megan uh, over there. And I really encourage you to get on board because what you see in this book is not, is not all of the essays that have been written on this subject. There's some very good essays uh, at that resource. If you want a direct link to it, then come and talk to me afterwards. And the second publication is the reason we're here today. It happened that Father uh, James Keenan, who you might know from Boston College, was in, was in the audience in the, in the symposium uh, uh, gathering. And he decided that uh, he would like to dedicate a volume of his series, Catholic Theological Ethics for a World Church, to this issue of street homelessness. And hence, this book emerged, Street Homelessness and Catholic Theological Ethics. I, I think that, or I hope, that the book will impact in two ways. I hope it's going to enliven the debate within church issue of street homelessness. I've been really encouraged by the way in which Pope Francis has drawn attention of church to the situation of homeless people. I was in Rome just two weeks ago and to see the work that's happening just around the piazza outside of St. Peter's is, is truly inspiring uh, to see what's going on. The book's already been used as a foundational text for Catholic social teaching courses in different parts of the world uh, and we plan a follow-up uh, another conference with the Dicastery of Integral Human Development uh, in the Vatican to see how we can fine-tune some of the thoughts uh, and some of the messages that have been developed through these, through these writings. But we also hope that this book is going to have an impact on, on policy makers. On the 10th of February, so in two weeks' time, this book will be launched uh, as the very first side event of the UN Social Development Commission as partnership with the Holy See, where street homelessness within the UN is going to be the priority theme. Now, I can't emphasize how important this is. 
This is the first time in 75 years of the UN that there's ever been a debate about street homelessness, that there's ever been any discussion in depth around street homelessness. And we owe, we owe a lot to the Vincentian family and their fantastic lobbying to, to put this up the agenda to get it in the position uh, that, that it's in. And if we, if we are able to get through the resolution that we've helped draft for this symposium, then we will have the first ever agreed global definition of homelessness. And we'll also have uh, the obligation of every country in the world to measure it according to that definition. So we'll know how many birds there are in the world, we'll know how many homeless people there are in the world. And if we can achieve that, if we can, if we can make this problem tangible and real, then there's no reason why in 2030, when we look at the replacement of sustainable development goals, why you can't have a measurable indicator to reduce homelessness globally. So that's the drive of this. Uh, and this book is helping us to develop that language and bring countries on board. For me, the lesson in all of this is that uh, Catholic social teaching is a really powerful tool in the informing practice and in contemplating systemic change. As a practitioner, and I've talked to other practitioners about this, it's really helped us frame our arguments, it's really helped us to fine tune our language, and most of all, and this is kind of like a, a side it actually makes you quite hopeful. That's, that's, that's a really nice thing about Catholic social teaching. It actually makes you feel quite hopeful about the future. It actually makes you feel quite positive about what you can do. And that's really great <coughs> in a very, a very depressing world. So please buy the book, right? Um, we, we, it's, it's ridiculously priced at $45. Could, for, I know, that's what I said. <laughs> and I'm the editor. Uh, but you can get 40% off if buying here tonight. And also, if you don't want to carry a heavy volume home, then if you look at the leaflet that's there and you go onto Amazon, the 40% extends to the code on the voucher as well, okay? So please buy it. More importantly, please talk about it. Please circulate it within your networks. Please get people to, to do things. So with that, you've heard enough from me about the origin of everything, but, but thank you so much for coming along and we'll move on to our next speaker.